Hey, boys and girls, and how is everyone doing today? Oh, you're having a fun summer? That is super awesome. Yeah, my grandmother's doing better. But I still have to go over there and read, you know, to her too. I have to read to her every day also. It's okay. Gets me out of the house. Well, we um, are reading Alley Cross by James Patterson. And we're on chapter 22 and chapter 23. Yesterday, he got in trouble with his dad because he got suspended for four days from school from getting in a fight with Kalila. And he gave him a pretty good broken nose. I think his nose is broken because it's bleeding very badly. But also, Allie's got a black eye. So let's find out what happens in chapter 22 and chapter 23 today. I woke up thinking about Gabe every day now. Went to sleep thinking about him too. Every hour that went by was another hour where I felt like I should have gotten more done. It was like an ache in my brain and in my heart. Two, I couldn't focus on anything else. Not even on the room around me sometimes. That doesn't look like social media, social studies to me, Nana said, coming into the dining room where I was on day two of my at-home prison sentence. What are you doing there, young man? I looked up from my texting to see Nana standing in the door from the kitchen. She'd already seen my phone and had her hand out to take it away. I didn't have much choice, so I gave it over. I was working on the Gabe stuff, I said. Confessed, whatever. I thought I was about to get Nana's sized lecture, but instead she just sat down and looked me in the eye in a nice way. And how are we doing on that front? She asked. I imagine it's all very hard on you. I'm okay, I said. I just can't stop thinking about it. Oh, I know, Nana Mama said. I see it in you every day. The constant thinking, thinking, thinking. It's the price you pay for such for that fast running brain of yours. I just wish there was more I could do about it, I said. To be honest, I feel like I let Gabe down by getting grounded. While I'm stuck here at home, he could be out there hurt or hungry or scared or in a hundred different kinds of trouble. Nana cut me off. That's the blessing and the curse of a mind like yours, she said. An act of imagination is a wonderful thing, but it can also be a burden if you focus too much on the dark side of the street. It just all seemed kind of impossible, I admitted. I mean, I want to help, but how am I supposed to find Gabe if the police can't? Impossible, huh? Nana Mama sat back and eyeballed me, like she wasn't buying what I was selling. Is that how all those detectives you admire so much have get it done? Mr. Holmes, Monsieur Perard, Olivia Benson? How far do you think any of them would have gotten if they worried too much about what was and wasn't possible? This is the thing with Nana. I knew she was right. I just didn't know how to take what she was saying and put it into action. Here's another name for you, Nana went on. Do you know who James Baldwin is? I'm not sure, I said. I knew he was somebody famous, but that was it. James Baldwin was a great American writer, poet, and thinker, Nana and Mama told me. And it was he who called black history a perpetual testimony to achievement of the impossible. I had to say that at one out loud to really get it. A perpetual testimony to the achievement of the impossible. Nana explained some more. The life I get to live today would have been impossible for my great grandmother or even my mother, she said. And the things you can do now as a young black man in this country, the things you can achieve. It would have been impossible for me when I was your age, but it takes some faith so you don't ever let this notion of what's not possible stop you from trying anything is possible, Allie. And I mean that. I saw that she was doing. She was telling me not to sell myself short. And I guess she'd known 
she came up from nothing in North Carolina, and here she was, being a total boss in a house with two of Washington, D.C.'s baddest cops. Not too shabby. You're saying I can find Gabe if I set my mind to it, I said. Is that it? Nana shook her head. I don't know if you can, she said, but there's one way to find out. Then she slid the phone back across the table to me. No idle shit agains, no shit out with your friends, but if you want to work on your investigation, I'd call that a worthy bit of homework after all. Thank you, Nana, I said. Don't thank me, just do good work, she said. And that includes all of your regular assignments for school too. This isn't a free pass I'm giving you, it's more responsibility, not less. You got that? And of course, I gave the only possible answer. Yes, ma'am. I said, so maybe Nana Mama is kind of old school, or a lot of old school. But I'll tell you what else. She's also one of the best, smartest, and yes, coolest people I know. No question. Chapter 23. The Good News. Part 1 was that I got my laptop back from the police lab that next day. They dusted it for fingerprints. And I'm not even sure what else, but Dad brought it home for good that night. And no, he told me, Gabe didn't have any fingerprints on record, so they couldn't check that, but I liked that he knew I was going to ask. It meant I was thinking about it like a real detective. The other good news was that Damon's college team, the Davison's Wildcats, were playing the Wake Forest Deacons that night, and the game was going to be on ESPN. I'd seen Damon play a million times, but never on TV. Nobody in the family had, and now he was playing for the same college team that Steph Courier had played, put on the map. It was like a national holiday at our house. Dad was even lifting my no television rule just long enough for me to, to see it. I don't think our living room had ever been stuffed with so many people. Samson and his wife, Billy, were there with their kids. We also had dad's cousin, Tia, and her boyfriend, and Janie's best friend, Shanice, who had a crush on Damien since forever. Nana had two friends from church, along with Father Bernardin, and a whole bunch of dad and Bree's cop buddies were there from MPD, too. I wasn't allowed to have any of my own friends since I was still grounded but at least I got to watch the game. Once everybody was there, I took a spot on the floor near the back of the room. That was for a couple reasons. I was tired of everyone staring at my black eye and asking questions. I didn't want to answer. Also, it was easier to sit back there and work on my laptop during the commercials if people weren't looking at me all the time. Now that I had my computer back, I wanted to load all my game notes onto the hard drive so I could have it with me wherever I went. Let's go, Davidson! Nana called out from the couch. She was all set up with her new app, so she could use her phone to track every move Damon's team made, down to the last block, shot and assist. Anyone who thinks they may know more about college ball than Nana Mama is probably mistaken. Still, it was awesome to hear the ESPN guys talking about the Wildcats during their warm-up. And even better when they showed Damon on screen. That's Damon Cross, who's been knocking down threes like nobody's business this season. One guy said, I'm sure Coach Bolton has some high hopes for this sophomore starter from Washington, D.C. Everyone went crazy. Woo! Yay! When he said that. But Nana Mama made us all hush when it was time for the tip-off. Shh! Not that it stayed quiet for long. As soon as the Wildcats took possession, it was like a screaming contest in our living room. And when Damon grabbed a running pass and landed the first dunk of the night, it felt like the whole house was going to come down. He really did play like Curry. And I was hoping maybe Damon was headed for the NBA himself. How cool would that be? I don't think I've ever watched a game as closely as I'm watching that one. 
In fact, I didn't even look down at my laptop until they went to the first commercial break. But what I saw then changed everything. The first thing I noticed on the computer was that it had a screensaver running, which was weird. Usually laptops go, just go to sleep to save the batteries. Not this one. It had a word rolling and bouncing around the screen. Then I looked closer and saw that it wasn't a word exactly. It was a bunch of random letters. Q-U-B-U-Q which is when I also realized, no, those weren't just random letters. Not at all. Q-U-B was Gabe's scream name in Outpost. And Q-U-B-U-Q -U -U was the same thing forward and backwards. It was also five letters long, which is exactly what I needed to get past the combination lock on the door to Gabe's bunker inside the game. Was I right? Was it really Gabe who broke in and stole our things and then gave it back? Why would he do that? Where was he living if he wasn't at home? What kind of trouble was he in? So while some Geico ad played on the TV and everyone else headed to the kitchen or to the bathroom, I was sitting there completely zoned in on my computer. This was no coincidence. That much I knew. It put a tingling spidey sense kind of feeling right through me. Gabe wanted me to have this information, didn't he? And he made sure in a genius way that it would be just between the two of us. Why else would he go to all that trouble of smuggling it in to me like this? In other words, I'd just gotten my first really big break in the case. Well, we've read chapters 22 and 23 today of Alley Cross by James Patterson. We will read chapter 24 and 25 tomorrow. So I hope you'll tune back in at four o'clock. Now, if you can't catch us on Facebook, you can always catch us on YouTube. I'll be uploading the videos. So I hope to see you soon. Don't forget to get your reading in. It's 30 minutes a day. That is our goal for the summer. This, if you're listening to me read to you, that counts too. I hope you have a wonderful, fabulous rest of the day, and I'll see you tomorrow at four. Bye-bye for now.